attacking the trucking industry, which is obsolete. All right? Any other questions? Well, what is it that people want from the city? And then you ask all those questions. Can the function be reduced and centralized? Now, the opposition is what you've got to remember. The opposition, my God, if we put everything in one place, that'd be terrible. And yet, the, the answer, stock answer that I give, is a luxury cruise liner. There's games and motion pictures and dining halls and swimming and tennis and it's electrical plant and hospital facilities on a modern luxury liner. It's a total enclosure system. And the government of that liner is the captain, the navigator, and the service departments. And you never have to write. You never have to write the navigator say you've been going a little too much to the law. Because everybody on that ocean liner seems to be occupied, if you travel first class, in making you happy. Would you like some fresh fruit? There's a concert coming on in three minutes. And you say, I'll have another. And then right away, you don't get any negative feedback. If you travel on a world cruise first class, and that's the way I picture the city of the world tomorrow, a closed system where everybody in that city says, by golly, there's new cameras available here. And it's available. How come you haven't got one? The, every man in government tries to find out how he can get more energy to you. Not tighten your belt. Lips in it. In other words, did you know there's a new underwater cruise for people within this group and that group? And they're always telling you about new things, the government, and trying to make your life richer, fatter, warmer, more secure, healthier, better vision. And there's a group out there always telling you what's available to you. And, and they're always trying to get it to you. Because the government is excited about the m many wonderful things that have been developed for you. Like the ocean lines. And by the way, we're passing the School of Wales. Those of you with cameras and all that, come on out to this deck and you get some good shots. But they don't provide the cameras, unfortunately. But the ships of the future will have the color cameras and telling you there's going to be an underwater exploration group and the small subs that are carried by the ships, you know. And so here's a government, just ask backwards of what you've got today. Tighten your belt. Eat more hamburgers. Turn off your air conditioning. Use one light, you know. Uh, and what they're trying to do in the other system is to get you to light up and live. By golly, you know, they don't know. Uh, how can a person be sad that they have to... Well, how can a person be well if they have to think about, my God, that my kid's crossing the street and be home at 5 o'clock, I hope the kid gets home safe. There are no streets to cross. There's no Mack trucks in the streets. There's no... There's no... Nobody lurking in the bushes in the park that hasn't been laid. There's no anti-social people walking around because they're all screened out and helped, just like there are no cripples walking around. There's nobody walking around with crutches and people in wheelchairs because there's an all-out program to relieve human suffering, no matter what kind of suffering it is. It's just like the war effort. It's total conscription of men, machines, materials, and money to enhance the lives of everyone. Now, this is, to me, the only kind of answer that makes sense. Anything else is... Is, is dangerous. Because if you're married, you've got three kids, and your husband and kids are killed in a automobile accident, your income immediately is affected. And if you're 47 years old, and you have the market for a particular value that society has been conditioned to, is less, and you have less bargaining power because your eyes are a little sunken, and because you, uh, you don't have as many dimples as you used to have. So society, uh, you go up and down your value. And the people I'm talking about never go up and down. I mean, it's a constant value because nobody is given a priority. Youth is not a priority. It's almost like, uh, what the hell is his name? The English word, humorous. The guy that wrote uh, Major Barber, Bernard Shaw. You just say, too bad that youth is wasted on the young. Because the future is going to show youth as a, as a limited system, and then as information increases, you will find that people that are older in the future have better facilitation and better accommodation. It's just like you want to meet a master ice skater, learn how to ice skate. It's less apt to be a 12 year old, less apt to be. So the future can generate an increase in quality. So whenever they show you movies on people in the future, we'll be looking forward to the older people. When I say older, they won't get any older. They'll look about possibly 23 or 24, maybe 30, but they'll remain that way for a long period of time. But aging will stop and they'll be able to reverse the process. They'll be able to move you back. The skin will change, and you'll be able to jump rope again. You'll feel great, not just look younger. They'll be able to engineer the biological systems and generally phase out medicine and phase out the need for dentistry. We'll know a whole general pattern. So I think we're moving toward a, a fantastic type, of, not just a, a better and saner society, but fantastic goals with a whole slew of people that have ambitions and dreams that have never been fulfilled 
These are a bunch of frustrated people that dare not dream. And, and let me tell you what that means again. I refer back to England about uh, 25 years ago, or say 35 years ago. Americans used to have transmitters in their garage and they have an old Ford. The kids would take it apart and change it. But no English kid dared dream of going into the back where he had a little car he was going to take away. He couldn't afford it. So English kids in the early days dare not dream. They didn't dream of having a transmitter in the back. Now if you go to the backwoods in the early days of Russia or Poland or France, you don't have a Frenchman as a ham transmitting set that has a car that he's hopped up and put fiberglass fenders on. He doesn't have that kind of money. In fact, if his kid began to play with it, they said, what are you fooling with that? Why don't you go out and make a living? See, in other words, we dare not dream. So the people of today, even though in America kids have electric trains and many things, they still limit their dreams to what's available. So what we will do is release that in there. Think of it. So we dare dream of the broadest concepts, things that we would consider outrageous today, men will think about in their everyday life. A very fantastic kind of world. That's why all the movies on the future have failed to show a wiser man. They always show all kinds of dials and instruments, but the men just as stupid as they are today. Like I said, they control universes of energy, but they get mad at their brother law. And it's not possible to be that smart and that dumb at the same time. So the science fiction that we would like to do, or depict the future, is to show a different kind of person with enough identity. Wait, not that different. So, uh, any other questions?